Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and if you've been following this channel for a little while, you know I'm all about the time saving. Now, last year I did a tea ring recipe for you, and it takes a hot minute to make that. I love making it. I make them for my sisters, uh, work all of the time. I make them for my family, for Thanksgiving, and for Christmas. And I do love making them. However, they take a long time to make, but they're so beautiful and they're so delicious that I was like, you know, how on earth can I cut the time but yet not sacrifice flavor in this beautiful recipe? Now, it is a milk bread, so milk bread is a harder roll to do, but the other day I was watching a YouTube video and someone used pop can pizza crust to make their sweet dish. And I thought to myself, self, oh my gosh, could this be what you're looking for? I don't know if this is what I'm looking for, but I am super hopeful. So I thought I would share this adventure with you because I have no idea how it's going to taste or turn out. So if this can shave off even half of the time and still get a good delicious roll for breakfast, I think I'm gonna do it. I think this is gonna be my new go-to. And this is gonna be so easy. This is gonna be one of those things that you can put together and bring to a party and people will be like, wow, that looks amazing. Did you make that? And you'll be like, yes, I did. And you did. It's just first from a can and then into your belly. So are you ready for this adventure? I'm excited. I think it's gonna work and I think it's gonna be great because pizza dough is already generally a little sweeter. And then when you add the other ingredients that my other tea ring has, I mean, this is a no brainer, right? Let's get on to this adventure. Let's go. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make the streusel, uh, the streusel that goes inside of our rolls. So I have a food processor here and inside the food processor, I'm going to add one cup of sugar, one half of a cup of flour, one tablespoon of cinnamon, and we're gonna get that mixed up just real quick. We're gonna just pulse it up a couple times. And to that, we are gonna add half of a cup of very cold butter that I have cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the food processor, we're gonna drop in the cubes, and we're going to let it process only until a fine crumble is achieved. Any more and you'll start to get a paste and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and get it started. And we're just gonna drop them in one at a time. All right, let's look. Oh yeah, do you see that right there? That is perfect. That's it, that's all we're going to do. Okay, so now it's time to get these out. Um, with pop can rolls or breads or whatever, um, it's very frightening when it pops on its own. So if you are always kind of startled by that pop, go very, very slowly. There we go. And then just smack it on the edge of the counter and it will pop open in your time. There we go. Okay, we're also going to need a baking sheet lined with silicone or with parchment paper because we definitely don't want this to stick because when the, the sugar comes out of the middle of the dough, it will stick to your pan like glue. So make sure you cook on something. So um, let's go ahead and roll this out just a little bit. So not a ton, we're just gonna roll it just to kind of get the bubbles and stuff, that's it. So now we're gonna put the rolling pin over and we are gonna sprinkle with streusel. So I did have extra flour just in case this didn't come up, but since I was using my pastry mat, uh, this will come up very easily. I don't have to worry about it sticking to my counter. And I'll just take a measuring cup and I will take some of my streusel and put it all in there. Now it looks like some of my butter chunks went a little too far. So you see that, how they're kind of like, almost like little clumps of sand? Um, that's fine, 
but not ideal, which is why you want your butter to be as cold as possible. It's possible that my butter warmed up in my hand a little bit. Um, if you don't want to use a food processor for this part of the recipe, you can just cut it in, cut your butter into your sugar and your flour. That will work just fine. Um, but I love utilizing my food processor for this recipe because I'm all about time saving. And if you get these little clumps, just break them up, move them around. It'll be fine. And you want this streusel mixture to go all the way to the edges of your pastry. I know that with some pastries, you want to leave a little bit of a gutter so that it, you know, it doesn't spill out. We actually want it to spill out a little bit. So um, yeah, just make sure you fill it nice and full and get it to as close to the edges as possible because you'll want that. All right, next comes the super, super hard part. We are gonna roll this. So let's start on the edge and we're just going to kind of roll like this. And then we're gonna roll and roll. And yes, it will try to come back on you, but that's normal. And then roll, and you don't have to be tight. You can just be kind of like a normal happy day in the park roll. And on the ends, see this end right here? You can kind of pinch that just a little bit to keep that streusel inside. So we'll do that on this side as well. And we're gonna roll and roll and roll, and roll, and roll. And guess what? We are already done with this. So this bottom is not sealed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wa wanna push just a little bit and try to seal the dough together on that seam on the underside. If you don't get it sealed, it's no huge deal, but you'll see when we try to transfer it that if it's not sealed, you will get spillage of that streusel all over the place. So just roll it back a little bit. Try to get it all sealed up. Okay, now we're gonna pick it up. We're going to put it on our baking tray and we are going to shape it into any shape that you want. So see that little bit sticking out? Totally okay. So let's go ahead and shape it into the traditional half moon cake tea ring that my family loves. Because if this is going to work for my Thanksgiving and my Christmas, they need it to be in this shape or else it's not a tea ring. Next, we are going to take a pair of scissors and we are going to make cuts all the way through the tea ring. Now, do not cut all the way through. We are only going to make half cuts. So when you cut it, we are only going halfway through the dough so that a little bit of the filling sticks out. When we get around the corner, you'll see. And keep cutting, going all the way around. The size of the slices totally depends on your family. We like it to be about this size, but you could totally go thinner or thicker. Um, just if you go much thicker, you might have to add some time onto it. Um, because we're using a dough that I've never used before, I am going to kind of eyeball this for baking time. I'm gonna start at about 10 minutes, check it out, see what I think, and then add time. And I will let you know how long it took when I come back and it's all done and we're ready to ice this thing. So, man, 10 minutes and we're done? This is amazing, amazing. Okay, we'll see you back here when this is all cooked to ice it and show you the results. Okay, see you back here. Okay, it has been 15 minutes and look at that beauty. Now, there's a few things that I notice right away. In comparison to my tea ring that I make, um, from scratch. Number one, the texture of the dough is a little different because obviously um, the other one is a milk dough. This one probably is not, but it looks beautiful and I know it's going to set up beautifully. So while we let that cool because you do want it to cool, let's make our icing. So in this bowl, I have three cups of powdered sugar and to it, I'm going to add one fourth of a cup of milk and two tablespoons of vanilla. And we're just gonna give that a good whisk until it comes together in a beautiful 
icing. So now when your icing gets to this point, this is the point where you get to decide if you want it more like frosting, which is what it is right now, or if you want it like icing or glaze, I should say. Um, most of the time I make mine almost like a glaze. So in this little bowl, I have two tablespoons of milk and I will just add it in one tablespoon at a time until I like the consistency of my icing or frosting. What's the difference between icing and frosting? Is there a difference? You know, leave it in the comments because I don't know, I, I, they're interchangeable to me. Now glaze, glaze is different. So my hopes is to make this into more of a glaze so you can drizzle it. Whereas I know that icing or frosting is spreadable. So here we go, see that? That's the consistency that I want for my tea rings. So what I am going to do is I am going to put it in a squeeze bottle so I can control where that icing lands. Otherwise, you could just drizzle it like this over the top, no big deal. All right, and once your icing is all done, now we just need to wait for this to cool. Um, we definitely want it to cool for about five minutes on the tray and then you will want to put it on the tray that you will serve it on. Now, hindsight's 2020. I have not gotten out my Christmas trays yet for the season because I was doing this for you. I'm not actually bringing it anywhere. Well, then technically I'm doing this for my belly, but I didn't get out any of my serving trays. So um, I'm just going to put it on a, I don't know what I'm gonna put it on actually. I'll figure that out in just a second, but we're gonna give it about five minutes to cool down and then we will transfer it. And as you can see, all of this sugar on the pan leaked out. And if you were not using a silicone baking mat, this would be stuck to your pan like glue. Um, this is my husband's favorite treat right here. So I'm gonna save it back um, and put it on a little dish for him. He loves that crispy sugar. Um, but that's the reason you want to use parchment or a silicone baking mat. Okay, I'll be back in five minutes to show you how to transfer and then we're going to ice it up. So I am just going to lift my roll very carefully, try not to break it, and we are going to transfer it right onto our serving dish. Now, any of those crispy bits that came along, definitely take them off because they're just unsightly, but like I mentioned, save them because they're really delicious. So check it out. Isn't that cute? Now, like I mentioned, I do see some things that I'm like, meh, I don't know. Um, the bread definitely isn't as glossy as my normal dough, um, but glaze and icing hides a multitude of sins. So you do not have to wait for this to completely cool before you ice it. However, if it's completely cool when you ice it, the icing will harden up and become more like an icing rather than a glaze. But since I'm going for a bit of a glaze, it's gonna be just fine. Plus, I wanna eat it uh, in front of you and it, I, it's taken too long. I wanna taste what's going on here. I wanna see if this is valid. So usually I drizzle over the top just like this and I'll drizzle several times. So we'll do the first set of drizzle and then I'll let it kind of melt a little bit and then I'll do the second set of drizzle and I'll just keep drizzling until I think enough icing has been achieved on my tea ring. And look at that. Isn't that so cute? If this tastes good, I just saved myself tons of time. I mean, like it, it is hiding the fact that it's not a glossy dough like the milk bread, but you know what? I think I'm okay with that. All right, so check it out. That is super beautiful. You could probably ice it somewhere else and then transfer it over once the icing has hardened so you don't get those pools in there. But man, isn't that cool? But we must know how it measures up. So to serve it, you just cut down each of those little things there. Say, first thing I notice is it's a little doughy. I might not have cooked it long enough. No, it's all the way cooked in the middle. See that? And there we go. Let's check it out. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Okay. Hmm. 
Here's some thoughts. Number one, I think I used too much streusel. I think there needs to be half as much streusel in there. Second thing, it took 15 minutes to cook. I would definitely keep it at 15 minutes. Third thing, this works. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, I mean, it is not my, my grandmother's traditional recipe, but mm, this is really good. This is a win. Mm, you see how beautiful it is? Wow. Okay, you guys, that works. I am super excited about this. That means that I can make a tea ring with very minimal effort and it looks almost identical to my grandmother's. Well, okay, here's the difference. This one and this one. Like, you can see the difference. This one's a lot puffier, but this one takes one fifth of the time, maybe even less, uh, and it still tastes amazing. I think that's a win. I think it's a win. All right, you guys, well, if you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week. And right now, during this holiday season, I'm looking for those time-saving recipes. So if you have one for me, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next time-saving recipe. Bye.